And uh oh, I think we got somebody ready to do this show. Uh oh. All right. Well, I can't read Chris Darwin's message now, but it looks pretty interesting. So here we go. <clears throat> Through trial one, trial two, and trial three, it looks like we have my good friend, my new friend, Rick Bassman, ready to go. And I think I insulted him when I insinuated he didn't know how to use StreamYard, even though he does his own podcast on StreamYard. We'll see if he's going to add me to the list of ass he's going to whip. He might be after me on his way to Cornette's house. So let's make sure that that doesn't happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce my new friend, my good friend, Rick Bathman to the show, courtesy of good old StreamYard. Rick, how are you doing? Kenny, I'm doing well, my friend. And no, no, no insult taken. And my list of people's asses I want to kick is one it's one name long and one, one name, name only one name so long. i'm making sure i got my green screen do you see what i've done in your honor there uh the green screen is taking a beating tonight we've had three dogs roughing on it but that is a beach somewhere in honolulu hawaii Looks look rough. at that man that that's beautiful that is a uh, different island the one that i live on but yeah. it's the same it's the same state, and that's a well, good thing. Well, for, for uh, the FBI, I told, would not give me the exact island that you live on. They said for security purposes and for certain reasons, just in case Jimmy Xanax up, wanted to come over there and, and, and Duke and, and go Duke to Duke with you, which, which we're pretty sure he will. You, I don't know if he's watching the show. Did you see me call Cornette just a few minutes ago? Oh, no, no. I didn't know you did that, man. I've been yeah. uh, trying to log on for the past few minutes. Oh, my I God. I apologize for the weird lighting. I, for some reason, I couldn't get on my iPad. Yeah. So this is my laptop, and I can okay. see the lights are blown out behind me, but yeah. uh, I'm doing my best. Yeah, they say the number one rule in, in video in video podcasting is never have the light behind you, and you said, fuck that. I've got all the light behind me I'll ever want. Well, you know what? That's outside on the, uh, on the lanai, and it shouldn't be like that. So I'm going to keep trying to uh, adjust uh -huh. as there we go. are going here. There you go. That, that's a little bit. That takes a whole lot of that light out of the back of your head there. So that's good. That's a little better. And little uh, better. let's see. Rick Rick looks like uh, he will. <laughs> he says Rick looks like he will tussle. Well, didn't you tell me uh, when we were getting to know each other for a couple hours the other day, didn't you tell me you've been in like 400 professional fights? Oh, well, me? Then, no, I don't know anything about fighting, Kenny. I took uh, I took one orange belt class when I was uh, when I was six years old. Uh -huh. And this and this girl, like, she slapped me and I ran away crying. And that's the last time I've ever been around the place. Well, God damn it. Okay. Well, yeah, I've been I've been false billing you, Rick, because I, I was all over Twitter today saying one of these guys has been in 400 professional fights and the other one's talked about being in 400 professional fights. <laughs> no, you know what, Kenny? I, I have, if I had to count, uh, yeah. fact is, it probably would be somewhere between four to 500, which right. sounds like an absolutely insane exaggeration. It but, sounds like um, a lot of yeah, even if I told you how it happened or how it started, you'd, you'd understand. But uh, that's that's a pretty accurate number, I would say. Okay, yes. All right, all right. Yeah, so I put that out on Twitter. And when I called Cornette a little bit ago, and that will be towards the end of hour three, I took a 15-minute break before I called you because I've, I've had two pizzas, two pizzas sent to me tonight uh, that were sponsoring feeding me and getting me something to drink during the show. They sent me a diet Mountain Dew, which was very nice of them. But I think nice. one guy didn't know the other guy had sent pizza. So I've got a shitload of pizza in the kitchen. That'll take me four days to eat. So we'll have well, to that's see. That's a beautiful it. thing, man. It's nice yeah. that you have that. Fan base. Oh, 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 by that's the way, uh, for the cancer uh, surgery that we're we're trying to raise $1,200 and we're right now at $898 on day one. So not bad, not bad. And plus I'm donating my whole Patreon account, but we're, we're trying to raise enough money for the surgery and uh, the feed of roughly about 10 families over there. It's amazing. If you've ever been to the Philippines and knowing you, you probably have. Um, you can feed a family of four over there, at least rice, you know, where they got something to eat. Uh, for 50 bucks, you can feed a family of four to five people for about a month. Uh, buys yeah, about what, what's, the, um, what's the what's the situation here that you're with the cancer? What's going on? Well, the cancer situation, I got a young friend over there. Her name is Jeannie. And I don't want to reveal the last name because the last time we raised money for her a few years ago, she had to have a blood transfusion. And okay. uh, and we verified it. We called the hospital and everything, spoke to the doctors to make sure nobody was ribbonous. Because obviously in this business, everybody's fucking trying to scam everybody. And you know that. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. fan, fans and workers alike are all trying to fork each other. So um, uh, she had her house burned down about five years ago. I thought that was a rib. I didn't think it was real. 
My son looked it up. Turned out not only her house burnt down, so did 60 others in her neighborhood. So I blocked her. I thought she was trying to work me. So I had to contact her back and beg her forgiveness and say, hey, what can we do? She couldn't give me an address because she lived in such a poor neighborhood. They didn't have addresses. Not like you can go to 22, 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Sure. It's, yeah. like, it's like, being in the, like being in the slums of Mumbai. It's the same yeah, thing. There it's you go. There library. you go. Exactly like that. So I doubted her then and blocked her because I thought she was working me when she couldn't give me an address. But she couldn't give me one because she didn't have one. And uh, so we ended up helping them get their place back to a livable condition. Uh, and I did that on my own. Uh, then about a year or two later, she needed a blood transfusion. Well, we called the hospital, spoke, spoke to the doctor. Sure enough, uh, had to have that. Uh, we looked the number up in the goddamn uh, Google to find out the number and spoke to her doctor. And then she was in there and then verified all that. And, and the kids never lied to me, man. It's been five years. And there's a lot of people in the Philippines that will scam you. Don't get me wrong. There's a shitload of them. Sure. Sure. This is not one of them. And uh, so then uh, she kept telling me, because uh, we chat from time to time. I've been friends with the family for a long time. Big John Cena fans. They watch all the stuff on YouTube whenever they've got an internet connection. And she told me she had lumps in her breast. I said, honey, that's not good. I said, uh, do they hurt? She said, yeah, they hurt. I have to put a hot pad on. I said, do me a favor. I said, will you go to a doctor, a hospital somewhere around there and at least get that checked out? Well, we can't go to the hospital due to all the COVID. We're all scared to go. She said, there is a private doctor not far from me. I said, find out what they charge. So she told me what they charge. And I, and I was able to afford to get her her first set of exams just to see if, if this is anything to worry about. Well, it turns out it was. She didn't have two lumps in her breast. She had three. Mm. Uh, two of them are hard. One is soft. And and you've gone through this. You told me about the thousand nights you've spent. You've out hospitaled me. And I thought I let everybody get my age. Uh, Kenny, how's... Uh How's your friend doing uh, mentally and emotionally and all that? Well, you know? it, it, it's hit her pretty hard. It scared the shit out of her. I told her, let's not worry until we know we got something to worry about. Well, unfortunately, when she went to the doctor Monday, today's Tuesday, and she sent me her results and everything. There's no bullshit. I got signs. Kenny, from Kenny, you know what? Yeah. Kenny, you know what? Um, I could talk with you about this all day, and I would love mm -hmm. to another time. Yeah. We probably, I, I just want, I want to say this. If she's having a hard time, um, I offer this to anybody that I hear that's in, in, you know, mental yeah. or emotional duress that's she's suffering having, from cancer. Having, if, if you want it, if you want to connect us, I've done a lot of that Absolutely. over the years and Absolutely. I'd be happy to talk with her. I might be able to help out a little bit, but I, I don't think with all respect to her, I don't think we should, uh, uh, belabor this story much longer. Yeah. Well, for my fans, they have to know what's going on or they fucking won't help. <laughs> and uh, right. that, that's why I'm not revealing her first name. I didn't even post her picture because she said the last time we helped her that there were some people that wrote her wanting nude pics in exchange for their donations. So, mm, well, that's that's just wrong. So everybody out there, help everybody out there, help Kenny's friend. Kenny, if you think I could be of a service to her at all, please let me know. Uh, no, I'm not giving money to that one Filipino broad. You're talking about my ex-girlfriend that I dated for three and a half years. No, we're not raising money for her. Thank you. Who, does someone uh, just ask you that? Uh, I had a Filipino girlfriend for about three and a no, half. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Did yeah. somebody just ask you if that's yes, what you were doing? Yes. Yes. Mike, Mike Lancaster asked me if that's what I was doing. Oh God. Okay. I know. Right. I know. I know. I know. We get all types. Uh, I try not to block too many people unless they push, push the envelope, but, uh, no, um, I, I know where you're coming from, man. I know where you're coming from. Uh, but yeah, I would like to put her in contact with you because she has really had a tough time with it. I've done my, I'm one of these people that tries not to worry about shit until you got shit to worry about. Well, we're mm -hmm. at the point now she's got shit to worry about. Mm -hmm. But I said, the great thing is we, you, we, we discovered this early. You got to the doctor early. They don't seem to be panicking. They're going to do your surgery in roughly 30 days. If it was if, if it was life threatening, I think they would get you in quicker than that. But uh, the, the, the fortunate thing is this is happening in the Philippines and breast cancer surgery is a fraction over there. What it would cost here. Sure. Uh, they said the surgery is about 40,000 pesos. Now, that sounds like a shitload of money. And in the Philippines, it is. It's roughly anywhere between 800 and a thousand dollars once you factor in exams and the surgery. Now, that doesn't cover her food and shit she'll need while she's in the hospital, but it gets the bulk of it kept covered. I mean, they're not going to turn her away if she can't pay for her food. <clears throat> so that's the situation we're looking at. And, and, and trust me, I'm not talking about anything that she hasn't given me permission to talk about. She just didn't want her whole name on because we got some assholes that, uh, she said some of them actually sent her dick pics in exchange for her to send nude pictures before they would donate.
Oh God! And, and look, right, well, they, and look, face it, they weren't going to donate anyway. So yeah, that's just that's distressing to even hear that. Well, please, please uh, send her my best if you will. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, she knows I'm doing a show with you tonight. She's going to be blown away because we never dreamed we'd raise as much money tonight. We thought it might take actually a couple of three weeks to get it, but we had one donor tonight who's matching dollar for dollar what we raised tonight, and mm. uh, he said if you raise six hundred, I'll I'll donate the other six hundred. And right, he's right. Just bored. he's done he's done that with us on charities before, and and he knows that that every dime that we raise and then some goes to help the people that we're trying to help. So thank you much for being a part of the show. And uh, but but uh, we've talked about that. We'll talk more about that off the air. I will put you in contact with her. She's on Messenger as well, so I'll put you in contact with her. But yeah, it's somebody that's been through this w would be good for her to talk to because I can you know I I, I haven't even had it much in my family. Um, I, I don't have much I can give her. So I really appreciate yeah. you making that offer. It's very kind of you. You, you know, make, making those kind of connections. And I think it's a really important thing in life and in general. I, you know, and myself and my close friends, guys in this business, like Tom Howard, for instance, uh, right. we, we, we do this regularly. We make a point of it. We see people on social media, just like you do, that mm -hmm. are going through some very, very distressing things. Yeah. So anywhere from three, four, five times a week, Mm -hmm. I'll write a pri I'll write a personal message, whether I know them or not. More times yeah. often not, I don't know them. Right. And I'll say, hey, you don't know me, and you, this is unsolicited. But if yeah. you feel like I could be of service, I would just love to say hello because I think I might be able to help out. Yeah. And it, it's really just more, you know, lend lending an ear. I think, and if you have a similar experience that you've been through, that helps yeah. for sure. But well, um, you know, char charity, if we want to call it that, it, it's an interesting thing. Because mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, we always do for ourselves. People yeah. say charity is, is unselfish. Charity That's begins not true. At home. You hear that a lot. Charity begins at home. It's not, it's not true. It's, it, it is selfish because yeah. if we do something good for somebody else, it, it feeds us also. And that's okay. Oh, yeah. That's a great thing. Well, we, we so talked about that in my show I, 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 tend to do a, um, I tend to do a lot more outreach on people yeah. with... Uh, with cancer than anything else, just because yeah. I've, I've been through that. That's You've all. been through it. Uh, you can talk about it and I can. I, I talk to people that are going through weight loss surgery. I went through it recently, 15 months ago, and I got people that are scared to death to do it. And they tried to scare me. I mean, they terrify you to go through weight loss surgery because first thing they tell you, it might not work. Second thing they tell you, well, you could lose four, uh, your hair. 40% chance you're going to lose all your hair. Well, I didn't have much to bring to the table anyway, but my hair, I wasn't too thrilled to lose it. Uh, and I get calls all the time. There's two or three that are in the chat room tonight that are either already gone through weight loss surgery or are going to go through it. And uh, I haven't had an ex-girlfriend call me and said her boyfriend is terrified to have it. And Kenny, can you talk to him? I said, well, absolutely. She's well, he thought because, you know, he's with me now. I said, hey, that was a long time ago. Don't worry about it. Have him call me. You know, if I can be of some help. Good let me for you, man. And the good other for thing. You. Well, the other thing good, is good, really good, good, good for you, Kenny. And shout out to Butterbean out there who oh, just yeah, had weight loss surgery. Butterbean just had it himself last week. He's yeah. recovering well. What should we what should we move on to, Kenny? Uh what do you want to talk about? You're my guest. You you guide me. I said you guide me and I'll go there with you. What do you want to talk about? Oh God, I don't know. Let's see. Let's you and it. I have um we, we've been somewhat in the same sphere for we, we have. Uh, uh, for, my, for, my son I, th I thought you asked I thought you asked me what I wanted to talk about. I, I'm gonna be rude for a second. I can just sit here and listen to you for the next hour and not say a word if you want. <laughs> well, uh, my fans would probably rather they hear plenty of me, <laughs> they hear plenty of me. Uh, my son couldn't be here tonight. He got called into work early. So he's in the process of getting his butt into work. He does night shift security work. He's pissed, man. He was dying to get to talk to you, but I told him we'll make sure it happens on a, on another show soon. You're always welcome on this show. Anytime you want to come on. And I really doubt we're going to cover everything in an hour that we probably got to cover. Cause you're right. We've been in the same sphere for a long time. I didn't talk to you because Cornette hated you. And I always tried to honor, well, if Jimmy hates him, I guess I probably should hate him too. Well, I didn't hate you. I didn't hate Russo. I just didn't know you. All I knew is, is the Cornette side. And shit, I knew 10 minutes into talking to you when you, you sent me a friend request on Facebook. You were tracking me down for a reason. And uh, and you thought that you didn't even know that me and Cornette hadn't spoken four years. You didn't even know that, but you reached out to me anyway. And uh, we had a great conversation, a couple of hours. And I... Can you see the comments? Uh, you know how this works, because I want you, if you can help keep an eye on the comments, if you see an interesting question you want to cover. Yeah, you know what, Kenny? No, I can't see them. Um, 
What, uh, not on the StreamYard screen, in any case, what platform are you on it? Are you on Twitter, Facebook, what? I'm on all of them. I'm on, uh, well, not all of them. I'm on Twitter, uh, uh, which is a Periscope. I'm on Facebook, and I'm on... Uh, so is this streaming on your Facebook right now? Yes, it's on my Facebook right now. We're on we're on. I should Periscope. probably be able to see the comments there then, I would okay. imagine. You, you, you could. Now, you won't see all of them. Now, most of the people are on YouTube. Uh, most of it tells me, as you probably know, where they're from, and most of our viewers are on YouTube. So well, let me look through here. Uh, Rick, sorry, uh, is the host of this. Uh, 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 a guy, a guy named Bandito says, "I'm sorry that Kenny won't shut up and let you talk. Tell Kenny to zip it." So that that's probably good advice. I, I Kenny, I mean ba Bandito. I tried to do that in a not very subtle way. What you know, it's clearly not working. So I mean, yeah. I don't know if Kenny will ever have me on after this because I'm probably going to end up getting uh, short-tempered and rude at a certain point. But we'll see how it goes. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Jeff Hudson wanted me to put his question up, so there we go. I've been through uh, some shit lately. My dad in February. I remember I've talked to Jeff, uh, Jake, a few times, and uh, liver failure. So he's gone through and and with the failure because of alcohol. Uh, mm -hmm. My my that my dad had an alcohol problem. Uh, do you have anything to add to this? And I'll shut up. Well, yeah, you know, I, I would thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I would, I would say this. First of all, Jake, I don't know you. You don't know me, but I, I truly wish you the best. I'm reading. Uh, I can see the comments now, Kenny. They're up on the screen Great. here. Fantastic. Um, just right, right on the StreamYard screen. Thank you for that, Kenny. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Not um, at all. all right, so, uh, Jake, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a list very quickly, and I do this for a reason. It's not about telling my story, but it's about getting to a point. You know, my, my list of afflictions is pretty long. You know, illness, stage four, lung cancer, three years of heavy duty chemo, four major back surgeries, bad infections that came from the um, surgeries, the kidney failure from the uh, from the antibiotics, two strokes, heart attack. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. Shot. Um, I, my, my mom dropped dead when I was 13. My dad died. I've lost my daughter. I mean, it's pretty much, I mean, it's a long list, man. And oh. the biggest one was my dog of all things, but yeah. that's just me. I'm a little nutty that way. So Those are I, I give you, I give you that list for a reason, my friend. It all led eventually to homelessness, um, to very, very severe depression, uh, to addiction. All the addiction was largely based on on pain, but I overdid it certainly. All right, right. so that's the list. Now I'm putting it aside because the poor me part of my poor me doesn't matter. The story doesn't matter. Today, yeah. Tuesday, uh, August 18th, 2020. Man, I wake up every morning happy. And I go to bed every night happy. And I'll, I'll say this. Stuff bothers me, sure. But it's only by degree. Because mm -hmm. as cliche as this is going to sound, by degree, certainly compared to how stuff used to bother me. Yeah. As cliche as this will sound, man, I truly believe that things do happen for a reason. And I think if we stop in the moment and examine why is this happening in my life, I mean, what good could possibly be come out of your kidney failing, right? It, or your liver failing. I'm so sorry. Um, right. to think it over and, and, and understand this. I, I know some people in my life that have been, that make my list look like nothing, man. And mm -hmm. these are strong people doing really, really good things on this planet. There's always an opportunity to get better, to be better, to be happy. Um, I, I can't give you the whole recipe here or else I'll talk the whole time and Kenny won't get to say a word. Oh, but well, I've just, been on, just, I've been on seven hours. I'm good. <laughs> right. You're on a roll, my friend. Suffice, suffice to say, Jake, there, there always is a way to a better day and to happiness, man. We can get into that in more detail, or more length another time, but I at least wanted to say that. I'm taking a drink, so keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's a long discussion. You know, that's what we do on my podcast, Talking Tough. We, we, we talk with people who have been through the worst of the worst of life. I had a concentration camp survivor from Auschwitz on not long ago. Oh, my. She's 91 years old now. She has all her wits. And you know, you know what we got to talk about? Like what boy she had a crush on while she was in the concentration camp. Oh my God. Um, Interesting. I mean, because the point is this, and, and we talked about her experience there and how horrific that was, obviously. And my heart goes out to her for that. But there's always there's always the opportunity for life for something <gasps> good. And even what appears to be the most horrific of circumstances. That's that's the point of that. So, Jake, I wish you the very best, man. You know, stay strong. Do your best. Seek out good, positive stuff. Uh, try to ignore the news as much as you can. Um, ignore the bad news, certainly. Surround yourself with positivity. It's That's the best advice I could give.
Well, Jake Hudson just said, thank you so much for what you did. Laura Walker says, Kenny, you're a stud. Thank you for this wonderful stream. Hey, thank, uh, thank uh, Mr. Bassman for showing up. He had every reason not to knowing who I used to be affiliated with. And uh, we, we were kind of reaching out to each other, to be honest with you. And uh, it's been an interesting show today. Uh, it's, um, it's been an interesting, uh, we're in our eighth hour now. And, uh, and hey, man, depending how much time you got, if you want to go over a little bit, shit, I've been here a long time. I've been here since three o'clock. We, we can go a little over if it's necessary. And especially if it helps somebody. And I'm not very good at shutting up, but I'm going to work on it with you today because you're a good talker as well. And you got some shit to say that people need to hear about. And uh, so I, I do want to focus on the questions. Uh, Brian Alfred asked, who is my guest? My guest is Rick Bassman. Uh, now, did Cornette challenge you to the street fight or did you challenge him? I know he talked. No, about no, I, I challenged him, Kenny. And no. th this is like such a weird thing for me at, th at this point in my life. But you don't do that. I, you don't do no, that. No, man. I, I used to, but it's been a long, long time. Long time. I, I, I used to, unfortunately, run, you know, run headlong into conflict. And, you know, that's just not me anymore. And, and thank God, because I feel much better because I'm not seeking conflict or, or enmeshed in it all the time. Um, it's just, uh, there's a question, where'd the beef with Corny come from? We can get into that in a minute. Yeah. I, 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 challenged, Jim, I challenged Jim for two reasons and, and to a fight. Well, more than that, but I'll, I'll briefly, as briefly as possible, t tell you why. Jim has been harassing me and giving me shit and that's weird for me to even use profanity these days, but Cornette brings that out in me, as it turns out. Um, it For 20 years now, brings it out in a lot one of diatribe after another, one insult after another, one threat of bodily harm, uh, death threats, all of that stuff. I mean, in my mind, when he says, I'm going to skull fuck your dead carcass, to me, that sounds like a dead threat. I don't that know. That sounds like a death threat to me, Todd. Yeah, cer certainly. Now, you know, unlike some, I won't take out a restraining order. I don't feel the need to do that. Mm -hmm. I would rather, well, he's not once coming and for all, just shut, just shut the guy up. I'm not going to get on face-to-face -face and talk with him yeah. because, Jim, you know way better than I do, Kenny. This guy is the master of the English language. Not yeah. that he's that intelligent. I think he's kind of a dumb dumb, actually. But this guy can talk unlike anybody can talk. And yeah. he'll de he'd decimate me one on one if we're talking. So I already know that's a losing battle. Why mm -hmm. fight it if I know it's a losing battle? Yeah. You know, it, it might be, might put a nice ex exclamation point I think on you the end hold, of this. I think you would hold your own better than you think because well, even I, though you know, you, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it, but thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Thank yeah, you. I, I have um, every confidence you could hold your own. Thank you. I, I'd like to put an exclamation point on the unending and incredibly boring Jim Cornette, Rick Bassman saga just yeah. by getting in a cage, locking the door behind us and having it out once and for all. He's been threatening me physically for years. So I'm finally saying, okay, great. Here's so, here's my question, why? So, so, may, so that I, said, I, maybe, I, that said, maybe he did. Head. That said, maybe Jim did make the challenge by threatening me for 20 years. Well, I made the app, I set the recent one. So we'll see what happens. Go ahead, okay, Kenny, I'm sorry. My, my question is why? I, I get the Russo thing. Let me Let me back tell the story with Russo. He thinks Russo cost him two jobs because okay. TNA picked him over Jimmy. WWE picked him over Jimmy. So as far as he's concerned, Russo cost him a shitload of money. Well, yeah. if it had been me, if I'd been in that position and I've had people that know Jimmy real well that said he cock blocked me from a lot of good jobs for a long time. Kenny, I never heard of you. I never heard your name. I said, well, Jimmy kept telling me he was battling me for get this job, battling for that job. I'm putting in a good word for you with Russo. I'm telling McMahon. All of it. No, he didn't. He didn't do any of that shit. He did not want me there. He wanted me an OVW where he could control the situation. And so I get the Russo thing in his head. And you got to admit, his head goes in places that most of us don't go. In his head, Russo cost him two jobs. Mm -hmm. So he wants to kill him for it. And he thinks Russo books bad wrestling. He doesn't think he does that. I know every angle he's ever booked. He hasn't got an original fucking thought in his head. Everything he's ever booked, I can tell you who did it first and who did it better. I've done it before. Why? What's his fucking problem with you? Well, as I understand it, there there are there are two that are the primary problems. Uh, there are, there's a lot more than that, and I do want to mention that later this week, uh, we've broken down. I say we. There's a whole team behind me now because of our podcast deal and all right. whatnot, the YouTube channel. Uh, we've broken this down into eight separate accusations, if you will, made okay. by Jim Cornette against me, all and right. we have some friends of Jim's coming on 
to lead through each question. And I'm going to I'm going to counter each one in detail. I, I will tell you this in advance. I'm going to answer your question in a moment uh, in advance, though. I'll say this going to absolutely attend to every detail of Jim's explanations. I know it sounds defensive and I want to sit here and say, I don't feel the need to defend myself, but maybe I do if I'm doing it. I would just like, because I have a platform now, I would like to get the story out and let people decide for themselves. If they listen, you know, if they don't listen and they stay on me, fine. There's nothing I can do about that. I hope they'll listen and decide for themselves. So that said, there are two major problems, as I understand it, aside from my being a midget, of course, um, that, that Jim had. And by the way, Jim, the correct term these days is little people, but little people. I know you're not making a political correctness, so so no. whatever. Um, and by the way, my midget self is five foot four inches, uh, nine inches shorter than I believe Jim uh, Gargantuan, uh, you know, example of uh, exceptional manhood. But um, that's all right. The, the midget's ready to stand up and... Uh, you know, nose to chest, Jimmy, and get it on, man. Now, of course, All right. being a midget, how are we going to know you're standing up? Well, that's a good point, man. Wow. I got to take that. I got to think that one through. Think that one over, yeah. yeah All I, right. I'm so, Kenny, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the – I'll give you the – sorry. Go ahead. I'm just trying to give you shit you might have to deal with an answer to later. I just want to keep you prepared. No, that's cool. You know what's funny? The, the midget thing, it's like – you know, I've, I've always said I have two goals left. I'm going to get to those questions in a minute. But I've always said there's, I have two goals left that I want to do in pro wrestling as a performer. So he, this will tell you right now how much this whole midget thing bothers me. Okay. The first one I want to do is I want to find out if there's still 21 little persons, some in the U.S. that are workers. and Because I grew up in L.A. And I was mm-hmm. a huge fan of Olympic Auditorium 22-man battle royal. Mm-hmm. And... And I went to three in a row. I saw Bruno San Martino win his live when I was a kid. That was amazing. Right. Uh, when I owned UPW, I was such a battle royal mark. I used to put my poor guys through battle royals all the time, man. How long did so, you own UPW? How long did you own it? UPW had a almost seven-year run. And yeah. we can get to that in a minute, too. A lot longer than Smoky Mountain. A lot longer than Smoky Mountain. I'll point that out. <laughs> right on. Thank you. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Much Thank longer. you. All right. Um, so I, I love battle royals. I want to find 21 little persons, hire them, do a show. I'm going to get a black singlet, a big, giant, fuzzy wig. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to get in there and I want to be mini Andre in a 22 man little person over the middle rope battle royal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's one of the things I want to do. All right, um, now, are, are you booking this? Oh, dude, I, I don't have to book it. I just want to be in it. It doesn't matter. Be in it. I was just wondering if you were putting yourself over. Oh, hell no. No, no. I'll let, I'll let those little fuckers toss me. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> now, is that, now, is that politically correct to call them little fuckers? Is that I know, man. I'm just going with, with the flow. Go I'm just going with the flow. You're in no, Hawaii. You know, you're, 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 you're secluded from all this. No, nah, it's, it's, all, it's all good. And the other thing I've always said, the second thing that I want to do and, mm-hmm. and for many years, I said it half jokingly, kind of like the battle royal thing. I said, and I'd like to uh, do a match with Jim Cornette. Um, I've been saying that for years. You know what? Now I feel like it's finally time. Anyway, yeah, yeah. let's get to the two things. And I don't want to be overly verbose here. Um, I do. I'm going to need a couple minutes to tell them. Absolutely. Let me try to get all, all the way through if possible. Right um, right right all right. So, so one is this. Cornette is always on me about, quote, unquote, exposing the business. Mm-hmm. And now I, I want to and I understand it. I'm not saying that his points don't have validity. Okay. And you and I both know, because we're human beings living on this planet, that there's at least two sides or two perspectives to each situation, if as not a, three, as if as not three. When I get it, when I get into a potential, potentially conflicting situation, I always do my damnedest to see the other side. I you know, like this whole, you know, the political battles right now, left, right, conservative, mm-hmm. liberal. I think it's important to, to find the middle as much as you can. Mm-hmm. That cornet, that knucklehead, that dum-dum, as, as intelligent as he is, as articulate as he is, Very I, don't think, I don't think he has any capacity whatsoever to see anybody's point other than his own, what's in his little narrow brain. I think that's all he has. So. That's a preface. Here's the first one, exposing the business. Did I expose the business? Okay, in 2000, 
I co-produced a one-hour special for the Discovery Channel called On the Inside Pro Wrestling School. Okay. That was the one that chronicled the discovery of John Cena. Actually, um, I actually remember that. And, you know, it's a good show. We we got nominated for an Emmy Award that year for Best Documentary. And it was, it was quality. Um, and the we was myself and Tom Beers. Tom was a guy who came to me with the idea. Tom later went on to create and produce Ice Road Truckers, Axemen, Deadliest Catch, one of the most successful guys ever in the history of the unscripted or, or reality business. So Tom and I co-executive produced this, and, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. Jim, though, to Jim, that's that fucking bass man exposing the business. Do you ever go behind the scenes to magician school and give away the tricks and all that sort of thing? Pain all right. Day. <laughs> yeah, so I want to get to that in a minute. There's a really ironic point about that I'm going to make that I think uh -huh. will cause you to, to, to laugh your ass off. We'll get there in a minute. All right. So. Did I go in? Was I disrespectful to the business? You know, if kayfabe were something that were still in existence in the year 2000 and it meant the difference in people's livings in people going to watch pro wrestling, I think me having done that would have been disrespectful. But in the mid 90s, Vince went on trial for the anabolics. Mm -hmm. And at that point, let the world know how pro wrestling worked. He certainly in that did. regard, it was already exposed. The year before my documentary came out, Roland Alexander and Barry Blaustein did a very good piece of work called Beyond the Map. That oh, yeah, came I out remember that as well, yeah. And that was before my deal. Now, I wonder if Jimmy, knucklehead, dum-dum, goofball, no, man, I'm calling names. I, yeah, this hey. is kind of liberating. I don't usually call people names. The, pre the president of the United States does it. I guess you can do it too. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, please don't go there. Oh, my God. I already um, went. I already went. Anyway. Anyway, um, so Jim, when her dum dum knows that three years before our show came out, Harley Race did a behind the scenes show for pro wrestling an hour. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. Harley did a one hour documentary. You can Google her right now and you'll find it about yeah. behind the scenes in pro wrestling. Um, Harley Race, I mean, who I would think that's probably one thing Jim and I share. Probably mm -hmm. our admiration and res admiration of and respect for Harley Race. Loves Three Harley. years before me, Harley and even more than I ever did. He loved Harley. Without, a I doubt. would, I would assume so. All right, so he didn't give Harley shit. He's got other issues with me, and we'll get to that. But this expose, expose, expose. If you look at my one-hour show, man, it treats the business very, very seriously. It talks about how hard it is, how it takes a special type of person the sacrifices you have to make. I mean, it's blood, sweat, tears, and reality. So did it go behind the scenes? Yes. Was it disrespectful? Absolutely not. Did it expose anything? Certainly not anything that had been done over and over again. I want to get to that ironic point. Harley's one-hour documentary. Kenny, you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm answering your question. Keep going. I got you. Harley's one-hour documentary was produced by Nash Entertainment. Not Kevin Nash, although we know Kevin hates Jimmy also. That was my um, first guess, and no, he does not like Jimmy. No, he does not like Jimmy. I've heard that from Kevin before. So Nash Entertainment produced Harley's documentary on pro wrestling. You know what Nash Entertainment produced the year before that? Nope. Behind the Curtain, The Secrets of Magic Revealed. <laughs> so I remember, Jim, I remember that one too. I didn't realize Jim, the same guy did both. Jim Cornette, Knucklehead. Dummy, goofball, dimwit, dum dum. You know, although you're um, not going to admit to watching this, and I do know he and that knucklehead uh, producer. I didn't know the guy's name, and I can't remember it. Yeah, um, yeah. producer of his. Uh, I've heard from mutual acquaintances and friends that they both responded quite a bit, but I don't think he wants to show his face publicly on this. But we'll find out. So that's reason one about exposing the business. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Who's that, Kenny? That's that's Scooby Deuce. Scooby Deuce has been upstairs for the whole eight hours, and uh, he got brought back early, uh, about twenty minutes. Two cows just went into the kitchen. Uh, they're about to knock my green screen over. So if if Hawaii oh, no. gets washed away, you'll know what happened, and we'll just go without it. Okay, here's the other okay. one. It's my baby Scooby. He's nine months old. Oh, uh, that's awesome. He's really cool looking. Nice yeah, to see him there. Yeah, he's half boxer, half Great Dane, and he's going to be 215 pounds are the guesses, and I'm scared to death. 
Holy cow, man. That is more than all three of my pit bulls put together. Yes. That crazy. That is oh, crazy. My family is so in love. I know we're getting off track here a little bit. My family is so in love with your dogs. And when I told them that you were involved with the rescue missions and uh, I told Mayara today, my, my son's uh, wife about uh, your partner, uh, we got to get into that in a little bit. I want you to talk about your partner and who, and who you bought your first pit bull from. And uh, I think you know who I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, I want to definitely yeah, get to Linda, Linda, Linda Blair, the actress, the star of The Exorcist. That's the one. One of my dearest yeah. friends in this world. But yeah, let's let's talk more about that later for sure. I'd love to get into yeah, that. We'll, we'll get that. Um, all right, cool. So the reason number two, and, and I do, I would like to do some back and forth with you on this, Kenny. Sure. Because it's going to be the first time you've probably heard this. And I, and I mean this with respect. I, I assume that you're pretty old school. I yeah. think that in a good way. Well, I, mean, I, I, good I way. was raised on Jerry Lawler, Jerry Jarrett, Nick Gould. Okay, okay good. Old so school I, that's alive today. Good. good. So I, I want to hear your thoughts straightforward, whether right. you agree or disagree you got on, on this next subject. But let, let me set it up first. All right. So the other big, oh, by the way, Bob Hazelwood wrote, LOL, quote unquote, exposing the business. Like the business hasn't been exposed for 20 years. Exactly, I man. Little, I think it's been a little longer than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, you know, I, I wasn't the first. I won't be the last. And, and I'll tell you this. I'm proud of the work that we did. It, yeah. On the inside, Pro Wrestling School, it's searchable on YouTube still. Uh, it was a good piece of work. I'm very, very proud of it, seriously. Um, and most of the people that started, you know, if you can star in reality, that is Tom Howard, Looney Lane. Uh, sadist who Bruce Pritchard thought would be great at WWF back in the day. Right. Um, Aaron Aguilera, uh, Justin McCauley. These are all the other stars of it. They're all friends to this day. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy to say that, which is a, it's a blessing to have friends for so long, especially when you don't, you know, work together anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Reason number two, the old school stuff. And I see why it bothered Cornette. I'm going to keep building up before I get to it. All right. But had he, had he stopped for a moment and understood and added some perspective other than his own, maybe he would have got off his freaking eye horse a little bit. The accusation is, I put my hand in the boys' pockets and took their money. Now, if I'm an agent or a manager or a promoter, and especially because I'm short, and add to it that I'm Jewish, oh my God, I must be the poster child for ripping off and a promoter i must be the poster child for ripping off the boys right got it so he talks about how when john cena got to ovw mm -hmm. and I, i'm going to bring up john just to make a couple case examples here this is going to take a few minutes so i hope we have it that's all right we got when, all the time we need when john got to ovw uh cornett found out that he was under a management agreement to me mm -hmm. now for years cornett has gone on and on and on saying that I signed the guys to lifelong contracts for a huge portion of their earnings. So first of all, let's add some facts to it before we get back to perspective. Mm -hmm. The contract terms, Ultimate Management Group, was a legit LLC, part of my Ultimate Pro Wrestling, Ultimate University, which was a school. Mm -hmm. It was a two-year term with two successive options to renew for one year each exercisable at mutual discretion, meaning if it went to a third year, that yeah. both parties had to agree to it. Both parties All right, had. now, the percentage, so it wasn't life, wasn't life term, it was two years. Um, the percentage was 10%. Now, if Jim's definition of that is a huge portion, then then so be it. Yeah, now, yeah he, got, he got you. All right, now let, let, me, let me add my perspective now. The world not according to Jim Dum Dum Cornette. All right. I, I come up, you know, I come up as a wrestling fan, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I love KCOP, General 13, Dick Lane, the LaBelle Territory every Saturday. Man, I was religious about that. For, for the he, record, what is your age? I'm 60 years old. How old are you? I'm 58. I'm about a month and a half younger than uh, Goofy. Yeah. Dumb yeah. dumb. -dum. Yes, sir. Right, right there. Same year, 1961, both Jim and I. It's on the tail of the tape that we put together. It, 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 right. it, it, I've seen it. So I come up as a wrestling fan. I had my first business uh, in, in the music business. I promoted concerts. I owned my first nightclub at 21 years of age. I had an agency for top 40 and cover bands. And we did about 80% to 90% of all the bookings 
in the tri-county area in California. That's Santa Barbara, Ventura, San Luis Obispo. We were very organized. I had an office with four people in it other than myself. It was a good little business. And that's really where I, where I learned how to conduct business. Mm -hmm. I later went to the mail room at the William Morris Agency and very quickly was promoted to assistant and then promoted to full agent. And at William, you know, William Morris is as reputable as it comes. At William Morris, I represented people like Ed Harris, uh, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, um, Amy Madigan, you know, Christy McNichol, very, very real people in that world. So I, I learned what it was like to represent talent, how to ask for what they deserve, but not piss off the buyer because you're over asking or asking in a way that's untoward. That's, um, you know, that's gaining finesse. It, it's forming relationships. And I'm going to get to a point with Jim in a moment here. I later went to the Walt Disney Company as a very high ranking executive at the Walt Disney Company. When I started UPW in night, well, 2000, when I opened my school in 1999, I, I was a little, I don't say more than, but certainly different than your average gym owner or MMA or pro wrestling trainer. For the I was record, a guy that brought, I'm for sorry? The record, for the record, that's when we got our WWE agreement with Ohio Valley Wrestling was, uh, I believe, August of 99. Okay, good, good. I, I came shortly thereafter, and I'll, I will get to that in a moment. Okay. So. I, I opened this gym. Yeah. Now, that was a decision because I did not have a lot of money at that point in my life. Uh, my wife and I, Gabrielle and I, decided that oh we were going to invest. My ex-wife's name is Gabrielle. <laughs> oh, God, how funny. How funny. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is pretty cool. She's my ex as well, but we're very close. She's an amazing, amazing lady. Oh, that was my ex. Um, Gabrielle's a good woman. God bless them both, man. It's good. It's really good to be in touch, to be good with your ex, I think. Yeah, it, it, helps. it certainly helps, especially for the children. Good. Good for you, man. Good. All right. So I opened this gym, big oh. investment, and we, we mortgage ourselves to the hilt doing it. I opened it for two reasons, and there, there was a purpose behind it. One was mixed martial arts was really taking off. So we opened the first legitimate true mixed martial arts gym in the state of California. It was called Extreme University. The other purpose was pro wrestling. You know, the Monday Night Wars was really, really hot at that time. And I had an idea, and the concept was this. You saw the types of guys that were over back then. These are big guys, right? Very big theatrical guys. Right. Southern California is the best breeding ground in the world for that type of guy. So my business thought was this. I'm going to open a gym. I'm going to put a pro wrestling ring in there. I'm going to train wrestlers. I'm going to look for bodybuilders, giant guys, colorful guys, theatrical guys. Mm -hmm. going to get them to the point where they could get a job. And then I'm going to go to WWF which was, wasn't WWE yet, to yeah. WCW and to ECW. And as these guys' managers make the best deal for these guys and create a real management concern. Right. That's, what, that's why I got in this business in the first place. Right. Very few people know this. I've explained it before. Idiot doesn't want to hear it, I'm sure. But again, I'm getting to perspective. Mm -hmm. So, oh, oh, my dogs are, uh, come here, babe. No. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Mine have already this done a front end. There's Eos. Oh my, uh, what, what's that one's name? That's Eos. That was my favorite. I told you when you sent me the pictures, that was my favorite. I love that one. Beautiful girl. Oh, she's, yep. a doll. she's a doll. She's amazing. That's one That's one of my three. As you know, my number one pup passed recently. Yeah. yeah. With that. So 12 years old or 14 years old? When she was, was only 12. Go Go, who is up here sleeping, I is 14 uh, now, right? She's 14, yes. Yeah, she's yeah, that's, my, that's my princess for my, sure. My son and daughter-in-law just are in love with your dogs. Uh, we we really we want to come. We want to come. Just oh, they're, they're, they are so amazing. <laughs> they're so amazing. Yeah. All right. They, yeah. So anyway, I, I got into it initially, Kenny, to get into management. That mm -hmm. was the idea. And I formed an association with Barry Bloom, a name you may know, um, and his partner, Michael Braverman. Barry was the first guy legitimately in the business as a manager. Now, I don't mean a guy who screams like an idiot and wheels a tennis racket exactly. type of manager. Exactly. Legitimate business manager. Barry at the time was managing Jesse Ventura and Chris Jericho. Oh, my. Uh, he later at uh, Triple H, China. Yeah. And I think he still actually does some stuff for Paul, for, for Hunter these days, Triple yeah. H. So Barry and I partnered. And together... We signed Mark Coleman and Mark Kerr, the two top heavyweights in the world for mixed martial arts at the time. Uh, we signed Rey Mysterio, who at that point 
had a $300,000 a year deal with WCW. Mm -hmm. I had a very good relationship, had a great access because I worked hard to make this happen with uh -huh. Jim Hurd and with Kip Frey, the guys who were running things at the time. Two mm -hmm. guys I know Jim Cornette loves. Um, yeah, and he's... also J.J. Dillon, who was running uh, Talent Relations, a guy I think Jim legitimately does like. Yeah, so, he, he loves J.J., which I do as well. So I was able to take Ray's $300,000 deal. I knew what everybody else was being paid there. I did my research. That's called using your resources. That's an investment I made to be able to get these resources in the first place. Then I used the finesse that I had to ask for what Ray should be worth. Right. We ended up raising Ray's deal from three hundred thousand a year to five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that year. Nice. He right. got a two hundred. He got a two hundred twenty-five thousand dollar raise. Yeah, damn near. Ray that. paid me a commission that year of fifty-two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. If you subtract that from five twenty-five, yeah, the net is way, way greater than, than what three hundred thousand he was making. Now, I'm sure he was happy. We would have kept making had we not come in and done that deal for him. I, I, what I'm doing now, Kenny, is I'm laying the groundwork for this perspective here. Gotcha. And I think you uh, I think you can see that. Absolutely. So in the midst of all this, we're doing a lot in the business. I get a call one day. Rick, this is Bruce Pritchard. Now, just like you and I, a few days ago, I had never met Bruce. I had never spoken with him. <laughs> right. But just like you and I, I knew who he was. Right. So. He says, Rick, we are WWF is starting a new TV program called SmackDown, and it's going to be an all women's program. I don't know if you ever heard this or not, Kenny, but that's I what did, I, I, I've been a proponent for that for a long time. I still am that the women should have their own show. I never knew SmackDown was going to be that. That was, was the intention. It, it been, I, I think it would have been a great idea, but go ahead. That was the initial intention. So, so Bruce says to me, we've heard good things about you guys. We're one. We are doing a nationwide tour looking for female talent. We're wondering if we might use you guys for our Southern California auditions, mm -hmm. and not only your location, but can you go out there and recruit? You know the types of girls recruit that girls. you think we want. Right. So certainly, you know, I think Bruce or WWF paid me. And when I say me, it's us because we had a we had rent to pay. We had ins we had insurance for our wrestling school. I don't know if anybody else had that back then. Maybe you guys did. But hardly anybody did. If Danny um, had it. I'm sure WWE was paying it. Okay. It he, didn't a, have, he didn't have so, it before WWE got involved. Suffice to say, we were making a large investment to keep the ship afloat. Uh, WWF, I think, paid us $5,000 fee for this whole audition thing, which was great. I probably would have done it for free, but that's not good business. So in any case, doesn't pay the, you would not pay the girls we brought in would, would blow your mind. I mean, the top female American gladiators, martial artists, bodybuilders, fitness athletes, and Bruce and JR, because JR came with him, mm -hmm. were blown away. Now, here is something that we or I did strategically while JR and Bruce were sitting in my school. I had Stefan Gamlin, who you probably remember, Russ McCullough, who you probably remember. Uh, I had I had dealings with Russ. And, and your good friend and mine, Sylvester Turkai. Absolutely. I had, friends the, this day. I had these three guys. Let, let's set the stage real quick for your, your listeners and viewers. Sylvester is the little guy in that bunch. Oh, Jesus Christ. 6'6", 325. <laughs> Stephon, 6'7", 350. He great was a good boy. Charlie. I mean, Russ McCullough, seven foot, 400 pounds, legit. So yep. I have these three guys, Kenny, accidentally show up. And okay. when they when they walked in, because they were there for girls auditions, right? So when these yeah. guys, and I had them meet out, I asked them to meet outside. Russ, and walk McCullough, in Russ McCullough wasn't that pretty. Nobody was, no, but he was seven foot, 400 pounds. He was All that. Right. So I told, I, I arranged it. So these three would walk in together for maximum effect. Mm -hmm. They came in. JR's jaw about hit the damn floor, man. I so, know what type of wrestler JR likes. I'm sure that impressed yeah. the hell out of him. So Open I introduced football players. Oh, yes. So I introduced them to Bruce and JR. And JR or Bruce, I don't remember who, said, You guys didn't happen to bring your gear, did you? Oh, why, yes. As a matter of fact, we did because we had planned all this, of course. Well, you're so, taught to always have your gear. Always have you. You never know when you're going to get work. Fair enough. Regardless, no, none of these guys had worked a match yet other than in our gym. They're all in oh, training. Oh, shit. So, okay. Sylvester, Russ, and Stefan 
were the first three signees to development deals out of my system. And that started a relationship which ultimately led to UPW, my, my organization, mm -hmm. having a development contract right. with WWF. Now, you know, SHI in, in, in the beginning right? stages, wasn't it you, us, Memphis, and Cincinnati? Weren't weren't we the primary four? I think maybe Puerto Rico as well. Yeah, in Puerto Rico, I forgot about Puerto Rico. Yeah, so there's five of us at, at one time. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, Victor, of course, in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, so, in any case, I was saying SHIT for brains. Cornet likes to say how I like to tell people that I had a deal for five years with yeah. WWF slash E when right. in fact it was only six months. So yeah. we're talking about a lot of perspective here. Let me tell this one as another fact. Okay. Idiot. And when I say idiot, I'm looking at Jim Cornette, not you or yeah. anybody yeah. else. Well, I, I assumed. Uh, the first deal when the company was called WWF was for two and one half years, Jimbo, two and one half years. The second one, because we lost the deal, JR called me and broke the news one day. And he was very straight with me. He said, Rick, we have to cancel the contract. We've absorbed WCW. I don't know how else to put it to you, but we really, we really don't need to pay you to give us first look anymore because there's nobody else to look at the talent. Right. Fair enough. I, I, I understood. And we made another deal for other incentives and whatnot. We right. always stayed in good stead and a good relationship. Now, later, when John Laurinaitis took over and Tom Pritchard was his uh, sergeant at arms. Another, another one of Jimmy's dear friends, John Laurinaitis. Right, right. So we made a second deal. The company was at this point WWE. That deal lasted two years. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, I know you're smart, but I'm going to help you anyways. Two and a half, 2.5 mm -hmm. plus, Jim, two, two .0. equals 4.5 years. Uh, same, right. number I, same number I come up with. We're both kind of smart, I guess. All right. So, Jim, in some places, you are absolutely entitled to your perspective. We're going to get back to more of the hand in the pocket thing in a moment. I, it's a long build, Kenny. I know this. That's all right. But, I got all night. But on the facts, Jim, that is another one of your outright, outrageous, bald faced lies. So shut your flipping trap and quit lying already. All right. There you go. Thank you. And um, you, ended, you ended that right when we were supposed to sign off. So, fans, we've been on for eight hours live, an hour and a delay. This is bonus time, folks, all free of charge. Here you go. You better donate, you assholes. Go ahead. Is this all right, Kenny, to stay on? Oh, absolutely, man. I feel fine, and you're getting, you're making some great points, and uh, and you've done something that no other guest has been able to do. You've been able to make me shut my mouth for the most of this hour, so you're doing great. Keep going. Okay, I and I apologize if I'm being rude about that. Just no trying to need. get the points, man. No That's need. All. You're doing exactly what needs to be done because this is a forum to let you get out your side of the story. And we know there's a lot of cornet trolls that come here. And if they're not here tonight, they will be here tomorrow. So that's fine. Excellent. You know, and, and I and I would say this for anybody that you're calling a, a, a cornet troll. Mm -hmm. They probably won't do this. I don't really understand what his fans are necessarily about. And that's not to cast aspersions. I do. Or I do. What, 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 what I mean is this. I don't know if they side with him and don't examine the facts or do, but I, I would say this, folks, if you're on and you're listening and you want to troll me, you want to flame me, that's up to you. There's nothing yeah. I can do about that. Nothing I have to say about that. But I would ask if you would consider for a moment to just hear me out yeah, and this make your own Cornette. decision. Yeah. That's not a Jim Cornette decision. That's all I'm asking. Sorry. Well, I, can, Kenny? I can already tell you ahead of time, just from, just from hearing what you've said so far, you are 50 times the businessman and looking out for your people than Jimmy ever was. And I can tell you that straight up uh, just, just from know, what I know. I, I wish I was involved with you. Shit. You pr probably made me some money. Oh, uh, thank you, man. Thank yeah, you. I, I'm, I'm impressed with what you've told me because I didn't know any of this because obviously Jimmy. Well, and, would and, and, and it took a lot of years to make money, man. I, we lost for ages. It was, a, you know, my wife had a tiny woman's clothing store. I'm almost ashamed to admit this, but I will. Mm -hmm. She had a tiny clothing store in Dana Point Harbor called the Alley Cat. And that store was the little engine that could. Man, yeah. a yeah. woman's clothing store supported UPW for its first three years. Oh, my God. So, we, we invested and invested and invested. We eventually did well, and I was able to support her and take care of her, which was a huge blessing. Nothing made me happier than to see her happy because that stress was gone. 
but it was yeah. a huge investment. So we did not make money the first uh, few and, years. And there's a lot of women in the business who love their men and try to help support them until it, it pays back dividends. And I'm glad to hear that yours was because uh, I, I don't know if I've known anybody. Like that. They all supported me, of course, uh, uh, emotionally. Uh, mm -hmm. but it, it was a while before I made any money either. And yeah. I, I got rich, but man, I never worked a day in my life. Once I got in pro wrestling, never worked a day in my life. I was, I was blessed to have the opportunity to entertain and it wow. was never work. And, and, and I got to be with my son all the time. He, he went on most of my shows with me. So that part I'm very thankful for. I got to spend my entire childhood with my son, raised him through high school. We had everything we ever wanted. We didn't get rich, but we had everything we ever wanted. And I owe wrestling everything. That's that's amazing, man. That is beautiful. Glad to hear that, Kenny. That's a blessing for sure. It is. Okay, so so we, we end up anyway, the story with JR and Bruce. So the first three signees out of UPW for development are Russ McCullough, Sylvester Turkai, and Stefan Gamlin. And of course, they all get sent to you guys. All right. Um but by the way, I want I want to give you a, a stunning number, Kenny, because I think you'll appreciate it. Um the number is 43, and right. 43 are, is the aggregate number of men and women that came from my system straight into WWE, WWF. That, right. That's a record, I'm sure, that will never, ever be equaled again in the history of this industry. Now, mm -hmm. I also like to say that in four bucks will get you a medium latte at Starbucks, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But it's kind of a it's kind of a cool distinction, nonetheless. So that... Uh, that access that I had to WWE, WWF, to New Japan, to Zero One, to um, promotions all over the world, that, that meant something to the people coming through my doors, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, so now I've got this school, and we get Tom Howard signed next, and it's at this point that, uh, that Bruce and I start talking about making UPW a development territory. So ultimately they do. A huge part of that, of course, was giving WWE a first look at talent so they wouldn't go to WCW. And I know that that's business, it's good business. So for that, the contract was $1,500 a week. So, you know, that's 6,300 6, if you do the math according to accounting principles, 6,300 a month we didn't have previously. Wow. At that point in our lives, we thought we'd hit the mother load. That was very- I, I, I would have felt the same way. <laughs> it was really significant at that point in time. I didn't, we I didn't have too many. I didn't have too many $6,300 months. That's not bad. All right. Well, you know, I mean, ultimately, we had so many revenue streams. We did it very well, ultimately. Yeah. Um, but a lot of our money came through booking the guys for, for motion pictures, TV, commercials, all that sort of thing. My and son, I want to bring that. My I son bring that in about, too, about what you did for Sylvester and getting him hooked up with a lot of the movies and commercials and everything he got to do. That, that tons you had of to them. Play tons with. Of them. Absolutely. It was tons of them. We've seen them. He showed us yeah. all of them. Let, let, let me, uh, if you don't mind, let, let me bore all you guys for a second and explain how that works. Go ahead. So in the movie, movie, TV, and commercial industry, the entertainment industry, uh, there, there's a thing you subscribe to called Breakdown Services. Breakdown Services is five, $550, $600 a month. I forget the exact number. Mm -hmm. I believe $600 a month. Breakdown mm -hmm. Services. It's put out every single day, and it's all the parts that are casting for movies, TV shows, and commercials. Mm -hmm. As a manager, an agent, a talent rep, you read it. And you see if you have anybody in your stable that might match that part. If they do, you then make what's called a submission to the casting director, or what if you have the relationships to the director or the producer. So what led you, what led you to put Sylvester Turke in the Jack in the Box commercials, which were fucking hilarious? Dude, it was a it was a submission. That's all you see. The it's yeah. the submissions are called breakdowns. The breakdowns is when you break down the cast into a description of what they look like, how they might act, with their their age, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember Jack in the Box in particular because over the years, Kenny, I did literally thousands of commercial and movie and TV bookings. Wow, I don't remember that one, but I'm sure it was because he was a good match for the breakdown. Yeah, he was a perfect now, match for that. He played he played so, a nerd. And he's, his line in, in the commercial was, beef's not meat nor food. <laughs> okay, very good. Beef's I can see Sylvester doing that. And Absolutely. He, played, he played the big nerd. And it was I perfect. I see Sylvester doing that. Perfect. Yeah, he did great. Yes, his first gimmick, I don't know if you know this or not, but when he was first with us, his first yeah. gimmick was Sylvester the escapee. 
and he no, was an escape. He was an escapee from a lunatic asylum who mm. wore overalls, a giant cat in the hat hat, and he lived in the uh, in the janitor closet of our gym, Extreme University. We let him out to wrestle. That was let it. him out to wrestle, of course. Uh, well, you got to <laughs> let him out sometimes. So I, never the escape I never knew that. I never knew that, but I'd like to have seen it. Yeah, I've got a great photo somewhere. If I can find it, I'll send it to you. Oh, I got to uh, have it. It's pretty I'm funny. Gonna, I'm going to give him some shit before, next time I got him. That, that, yep, that's awesome. All right, so 600 bucks a month. Let's say that's the number for the breakdowns. Now, what you then do is you submit your clients. If you spend as much time as I'd spent at that point in the movie, TV, commercial business, you learn a few things. First, you, you get to know the casting directors. You get to know producers. This is an investment of time and resources establishing these relationships. You're investing the money on the breakdowns. You're investing the money having an assistant to answer the phone so you create a good impression on the offices when they call you so they know you're legitimately in business. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if a guy like Sylvester can get a job in a commercial like Jack in the Box, ultimately he got the job because he is him. But everything that we brought to the table, everything I just described to you, plays a part in that. Um, for instance, uh, way back in the day when John Cena was with us, there was a brand new reality show when reality shows are first getting started. And I saw it in the breakdowns. And I'm like, it's called Manhunt, by the way. Manhunt. Um, yeah, he, he was in Manhunt when he came to us. He was already on the CW network. And they, right. assigned, they assigned him to me kind of fresh into that. So we yep. had a television star arrive, and, and it was pretty good. It, it worked right, out good. Cool. For me. Yeah, you laid so the you ground. Remember, man, huh? okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he was, good. and he was good in it too. He was definitely the star of that show. Well, you There's, know, and you can, yeah. I mean, John's going to be the star of anything wherever he goes. That's, he just, that's just what he is. You and I both know that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that his public persona is is unequal. Not his private, but his public persona is yeah. is unequal. So I see the breakdown for Manhunt. I read it. And then I see that Ray Hollett has already been cast in it. Ray is a female lead. That was Zap from the American Gladiators, who happened to be a friend. She's one of the girls I brought in for the J.R. Bruce casting for SmackDown. So yeah. then I look at the producers. Oh, Julie Warner. I know Julie. All right. All these relationships. I spent all this time, all this money, all this energy building over the years, right? The 600 bucks a month on the breakdowns. The whole the having the office that it gets mailed to, because it was mail back in those days. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have all this stuff, and I read the part. I'm like, that sounds like John Cena. So I don't have to do a cattle call submission. I have the relationship, so I can pick the phone up. No texting back then. I can pick email was a new thing. I picked the phone up. I call. I said, Julie, you have somebody you need to see. Keep in mind, this is the executive producer I'm calling now. These are the decision makers. She says, sure, Rick, of course, send them in. Well, John goes in. He does the rest because he's John Cena, right? He got the job. He was offered $20,000, 20,000. That was, a, back then, that was good money. That's keep in bad. mind, keep in mind a few months before that, Kenny, John came up to me, tears in his eyes, literally mm -hmm. saying, I cannot afford the tuition for the wrestling school. It mm -hmm. was $250 a month. And I looked at him. Now, this was right at the point. You know, we, you know, people also say this, you know, he, he, moved, he moved out to you from Boston, right? When he was kind of just a gym rat in Boston. Didn't he move straight from Boston to you? I might be mistaken, but I think he was in Venice, California for a while. Okay. Doing some, body, doing some bodybuilding and other stuff out there. Yeah, he was but doing a sure. amount of that. So that's a good possibility. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure of that. So okay. in any case, a few months before John did not have the money to pay the tuition. Um, I didn't love John as a person, mm -hmm. but. I knew he was going to make it in the business and make it big. Yeah. Um, that's not because I had a great eye. Anybody could have seen that in him. Like The Rock. You, when you see him, you see Anybody it. but Vince McMahon. Vince didn't think okay. he had it. Took. That's another story. I know that. It so is. usually when you see it, you see it. All right. And, I, you know, John was also a businessman. I said, John, as you know, I manage talent. Um, I think we can do a lot with you. Let's talk about signing a management agreement. He signed it. Um, we go through it thoroughly, like I do with everybody, so they know exactly what the heck they're signing. And like, hey, let let him go on the tuition, no problem. Even though when he was asking me, I, I for some reason I remember thinking this: this guy's saying he can't afford it. Yeah. I have not turned the corner yet financially. Right. I still go home to my wife, who's crying, yeah, about how we're to make our bills. 
And now this guy is in front of me asking not to pay 250 a month to go to this school that I'm paying rent on, insurance on, paying the instructors. I went, okay, did it. Signed him to management. Can't can't give everybody John's deal. I mean, you can't let everybody go for free. (laughs) No, no, we couldn't. And we didn't. Uh, So in any case, manhunt. He's offered Uh 20,000. Now, at that point, as I've as I have claimed, I understood the movie and TV industry. Mm -hmm. I had relationships. I had a word a word. uh, Barry Bloom likes to use a lot finesse. I like to think I developed the finesse to know how to talk to somebody in in a very straight business like way. I've tried not to interrupt you all night, but I have to here. There is a chance because StreamYard, I think the deal I'm on, I'm on the mid tier. I think I'll yep. let you go four hours. Is that correct? We're almost done. Okay. We're almost I'll, done. Do you want to me to click back in and, and finish up the show with you and put that on our Patreon account? If that, whatever you'd like to do, Kenny, doesn't right. make if, any if, difference. If, if it kicks us off, we'll go till it kicks us off. And then I will send you another link and we will finish okay. the story. Very, very good. All right. So he's offered 20,000 per manhunt. I use my relationships, my experience and my finesse to ask and get him $40,000. I thought that was the right number. I thought it'd be available. You want to use that same experience and finesse to not ask for too much because you piss people off. So I got John $20,000 more dollars, double what he was offered. Nice and for job. a guy who couldn't pay two fifty dollars a couple months before, he would have accepted $20,000. So John paid me a commission of $4,000. He netted $36,000. $16,000 more than he would have had he done the deal himself. Let right. me ask you this, Kenny Bowen. Yeah. Did I put my hand in his pocket in a untoward way? You didn't do anything I wouldn't have done myself. Thank and you. I, and I might have done more. All right. Fair I enough. Done more. So, right. And then we'll get to Jim's. If we don't get cut off, we'll get to Jim's gripe about my taking taking the boys' wrestling money. We can get into that Bill if we don't get uh, the person I'm raising the money for wants to know how everything's going. And because uh, I don't think she has an internet connection to see what we've done. And she's checking to see if her, so I'm just letting her know we're still doing the show. But th- this is the girl we're raising the money for. Hmm. And, uh, but yeah, so far we're still going here, it looks like. Uh, I just said good stuff. Uh, oh, I said God. I meant to say good stuff. So let's do that. Uh, I- I'm impressed with your story, man. I'm so glad I've, I've got you on. Uh, cause this is good stuff and it's given you a chance to tell your side of the story and you're exactly right. The, the true trolls aren't going to give a shit what you say. They don't give a shit what I say. They all know more than me. They all know more than you, even though I've known him for 45 years. What the fuck do you know about Jimmy more than anybody on the fucking planet? That's what I know about Jimmy. Uh, so I am so happy to give you, and, and have you noticed, and then we're going to get back into the story. And if we get cut off, we're, we'll do the rest of it on Patreon. Um, have you noticed how many fucking people Jimmy hates and how many people hate Jimmy? How many people hate you? Yeah, how, many you Jimmy, know, how many people hate you? How many people hate me other than people I've blocked on Facebook and Twitter? Yeah, Kenny, you know, and, and I got to tell you, it's it's a lot. I don't know how many hate him yeah. I, and I don't know exactly how many he, he hates. I know it's a lot, but, you know, I got to tell you, with, it's a lot. With, all his, with all his attacks on me, mm-hmm. I've got to tell you the thing that probably bums me out the most Sure. It makes me saddest of all. And and Jim, if you're out there watching this, I'm going to ask you to please help remedy this situation. Sure. Jim, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, Jim, from the bottom of my heart for a favor. As, as a man, I, as a man. As a man, Jim, if you know what that is. Um, I've seen you rank the people you hate the most. Mm-hmm. Please, how do I make it to your top 10, man? Please. I feel so sad I'm not in this top 10. That does bums any, me out. Kenny. Does anybody know if me and Chris are in the top 10? Because yeah, I have, buddy, you're in there. You're, oh, you're I'm for in. sure in there. I'm in? Okay. Uh, and he I hates don't think Chris is, he, well. Oh, he hates my son worse than me. Because my son's who got me and Russo together. So well, Maybe you're not in there, man. I know Russo's yeah, in there. Mark I'm, Madden is know, in I there. Think, I don't think I'm there yet. But uh, he he's made it clear he hates his son worse than me for two reasons. Oh. But, my son got me and Russo together. He hates that because I discovered Russo is actually a pretty fucking good guy and a very Christian, by the way. Uh, and 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 that's where that's the point I was making to you the other day. I'm an atheist, and it's amazing how many Christians I am dear, dear friends with that they don't try to swerve me. I don't try to swerve them. You got your beliefs. I got mine. Can't we all get along? To quote Rodney King, can't we all get along? And I think we can if if we understand each other's differences. 
And uh, but Jimmy doesn't want to understand anybody's differences. No, and he's always no. been that way. And, and wrestling made him worse. He was bad enough as a kid, but he was my friend. I always defended him. I always made excuses for him. He's even said that about me because we stole that line from Lance Russell. I've been making excuses for you, Lawler. We, we stole that from Lance Russell. And um, wrestling made him worse. Bobby Eaton told me that wrestling made Jimmy worse. Bobby told me that Louisiana ruined Jimmy because uh, he had so much heat down there uh, in the locker room and out, uh, with the fans that he, he feared for his life every damn night. And they, they, he said the Louisiana territory ruined Jimmy. And, uh, and there's been others to back up that statement as well. Really? Yeah. Well, oh, okay. I want the fans, by the way, Chris Schmidt or who, uh, Jay Rillick, whoever's watching If for whatever reason, this show ends, please let me know on messenger. So we're just not he sitting here talking into dead air. Uh, so keep the comments coming. And if this show ends and you guys aren't getting it, somebody write me on my inbox on messenger and say, Hey, Kenny, we're not getting the show. And then Rick and I, as long as he wants to talk, I'm listening. Uh, well, Kenny, if, if, the, if they're not getting the show, they're how getting they it. Let us know? Yeah. Oh, they can tell me on messenger. They can write my inbox on messenger and say, Hey, Kenny, the, the, the feed died. And Chris, um, Jay Rillux or Chris Schmidt or one of these guys uh, can write my inbox and tell me. Uh, but no, yeah, no, no. Kenny, yeah. Kenny, 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 yeah. Kenny, Kenny, what I'm trying to ask you is this. Yeah. If the feed died, how are they going to hear you saying, if the feed died, let me know? Well, they're because they're answering me now. So now they know. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Dumb, dumb. I'm sorry. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get what you. All right, so you we're still now. we're still you live. Know. You're saying we're still you're live. Still live. Yeah, we're still commenting. Let, let me um, let me wrap up my last John Cena example for now, because I think this is the guy Jimmy always brings up in, nice. in a connection with me. So I, I signed John to this well, man, and I love this because there's not two people on planet Earth that I know of that are more instrumental in the development of John Cena than me and you. And okay. until two days ago, you and I never spoke. I know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So other guys too, you know, talk Tom Howard, probably Jim Cornette himself, uh, you know, John, John more than anybody, but we all played our part. That's you know, we all played a part. No, no doubt about it. All right. So now it's time to get guys signed to WWF again. And we had a whole bunch that Bruce and JR were interested in. Now, back in those days, Kenny, they actually used to FedEx the development deals to my office, to mm -hmm. me. And it was so fun because I loved handing them out. It was oh, like, oh, yeah, what a high that would be. So, so fun to I do that. I didn't get to do that. That's cool. Did, we, we would make, we'd, get, we'd make all the students come. We'd sit everybody down. We'd have celebrate. It was so fun. Oh, um, hell yeah. So as another, another way the world changed, Jim, old school Jim who can't stand the world changing. I'm sure Jim says, well, when I came up, the boys paid their own way and they traveled in the car and ate tuna fish and they had to work for free and on and on. So yeah, anyway, you did. this is the point in the business I'm talking about now in the early 2000s, the first time wrestlers were actually paid to train. It was a change in the industry. Yeah, so, that changed things dramatically. It, yes, and it's still being felt today. So I don't know, if, I'm sure you remember this. The average development deal back in those days was $300 a week. Now, now, what year was that? And I'll tell you what it was when they got to us at Ohio Valley. Well, they came to you under the same deal. I know that because maybe it maybe it raised when they got there. It did raise. And I'll tell you how I know for a fact it, it eventually raised uh, because okay. Rico had to ask for a raise because uh, he wasn't making enough money to support his family in Vegas and also live here. He was trying to keep two families going. But Randy sure. Orton got recorded once. He was up in the crow's nest and, and, and Danny had the cameras and the microphones on. And Randy Orton, Randy Orton was recording. I hate this fucking shit. I'm only here for the 750. I hate wrestling. Yeah. So yeah. eventually, everybody, uh, anybody that had promise was getting 750 a week. If they were kind of right. borderline on you, it was about 500. And then you had the Brock Lesnar deals, the Big Show deals, and the Mark Henry deals, which well, were and and, and, and the Sylvester and the Sylvester Turkai deal. I, mean, well, I had a better deal than that. Yeah, uh, I remember yeah. he was driving a brand new Lexus when he got here, and there weren't too many of the guys that had a brand new Lexus. Dude, Sylvester's initial offer, I think, was higher than most. I believe the initial offer was 500 a week. Yeah. We okay. got, now when I say we, this is me and Barry Bloom. And we okay. did a lot of work on this deal. Oh, my God. We got Sylvester 100000 for the first year. So that was, you know, that's almost two grand a week. 
that was way, way more than the company was paying back then. And I know Jim, you know, Sylvester, you know, I'm the sweetest guy in the world. He and, the the most agree- and the most and, and the most agreeable guy in the world. He, so he, he would agree if they to had told Sylvester, hey Sylvester, your deal is three hundred dollars a week, you and I both know he would have said, okay. He, so, would, he would have done that. He certainly so, would have. So Barry Bloom and I worked our freaking asses off on that deal. It took a long time to get that deal done. We right. had to call up all our experience, all our resources, all our finesse. We got Sylvester a hundred thousand to start. He paid us, you know, if it was two thousand, let's say two thousand a week for mathematical, it was eighteen hundred and some dollars. He paid yeah. us ten percent. Was right. it worth was it worth it to him to pay us at ten percent? I would certainly think it was. Yes. And Jim, of course. Got on Sylvester, Jim Cornette, got on Sylvester's back when he got out there to mm-hmm. kill his deal with us. And and Sylvester told me that. He was really upset about it. Yeah. You know, Jim, the world changed, buddy. Pull your head out of your own butthole or whatever. I'll, 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 tell, you, I'll tell you this right out of Sylvester's own mouth. He absolutely loved and adored you. And I don't, I don't know how much contact you still have with him, but every time Jimmy would bad mouth the deal, he said, man, he says, Bassman ain't getting anything he didn't earn and anything I'm happy to give. And that's yeah, exactly, we're still in touch. Jimmy, good man. exactly what he told Jimmy. And he never, ever had a bad word to say about you or the deal. And he said he was more than happy and he'd do it again a hundred times. Appreciate that. That's mm-hmm. nice to hear. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're Absolutely. still in touch, and I think we'll all, I think we always will be. I'm sure of it. Rob Baker says he had a turkey action figure. I don't even have one of those. I gotta look into that. I, I'd love oh, to have. I'd love to have the, old, guys. the only one I have is I have an old school Roddy Piper action figure. I'd love to have this. Oh, so, so the question came up earlier, and being as we're still on the air, and I don't know why because we shouldn't be. Uh, but a, a guy, uh, Chris Schmidt, asked earlier that he knew that you had a great relationship with Roddy Piper. He wants to know if you have an interesting Roddy Piper story. Oh, God. God. I mean, I only met him a couple of times. I don't really have enough to give a story. I got stories that I've heard Cornette tell. Have you got a bird in the house? <laughs> well, what's, oh, that's a tail wag. I thought you had a bird. Yeah, that, that's one of the tails, okay. yes. I thought you um, had a bird in the house. Rod, Roddy was one of my very best friends in the oh, business. My, oh, God. And, you know, of the guys that came from the era before. Oh, that, that's Rod- my baby right there. That's my baby. <laughs> yeah. No. Roddy and uh, Roddy and Dallas Page of the, you know, older school. Oh, yeah. Two, absolutely. Yeah, I know. My D. two D. best friends in the industry. And I managed um, to be at the Louisville Gardens one night. Thrill of my life. I love working with DDP. Against yeah, the under- good, 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 man. We're still very, very close. Very, to he's, as good, he's as good as they are. They say I some think. people. Oh, yeah. look at the kisses. Oh, my God. I'm jealous. I am jealous. Yeah. She's. She's really sweet. She is ain't a, a woman on the pl- ain't a woman on the planet Earth kisses any better than a pit bull. Oh God, no! <laughs> I know, I know. But you'll get her soon. And I, I broke up with. So go ahead. <laughs> no, that uh, fair enough. All right. So anyway, we'll get back to Roddy later. I've got a lot of Roddy stories, of course. All right. All go right. ahead. Go ahead. But let's finish it. Let's finish this boring stuff off. So hey, I don't think anybody thinks it's boring. We still got a, a pretty good, a pretty good room in here for twelve thirty at night. F- fair enough. So I guess Cena. That forty thousand dollars, and I'll never forget. I, I finished the deal, and it was a pretty complex deal. I was in the parking lot of the Irvine Spectrum, w- going in to meet my wife at a restaurant because our, our wedding anniversary. That was Miss Gabrielle, and, I believe. Gabrielle and I sat in that car while she was inside, like an idiot. Not her, me, like an idiot. I kept her waiting for two hours while I was closing John Cena's deal on, on Manhunt, and I. After we finish it, I picked the phone up. Keep in mind now, I'm calling a guy who just mere months before came to me crying because he could not afford $250 a month. And I right. called him and I said, John, we're closed. So I, even, even though he wasn't my favorite guy, I still love to deliver good news. And right, of course. John, we close, yeah. we close a deal, $40,000. $40, and I'll remember his reaction to this day. Oh, Rick, don't spend all that four grand in one place. Um, I mean... You know, snide, sarcastic, holier than thou. Um, oh, fucking Christ! But, you know, I didn't it, know that, but I believe every word you're telling me. Yeah, that's just a that's a different JC for a different day. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> John, but, but, you know, but this is the same guy that's recently donated heavily to a couple of funerals around, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's great. I think I think uh, it's amazing. And he's in, pos- he's you in gotta, position you be, to do you it. Gotta be appreciative, and we never hear from him. I know you say you never hear from him, and, and it is disappointing. 
It really it is. Right. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, is what it is. So I, I'm I'm building all this up to finish the cornet. Yep. Right money in, uh, hand in his pocket guy, um, or uh, me being the hand in the pocket. So we get. I used to get the contracts for development. Typically, Kenny, they were three hundred dollars a week, and a lot of guys started at that. So package arrives, and I knew what was in there. It's contracts for Justin McCauley, who later fought heavyweight at UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron, Aguilera, Aaron Aguilera, who had a short run as Jesus, Carlito's bodyguard. Yeah, I, I remember and that name. Basil Bozinis, who and unfortunately I mean, I mean no Carlito as well. Uh, yeah, let, let, let me finish the story if you don't mind. I'm sorry. I'll go right ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. Basil Bozinis, who unfortunately is no longer with us, Basil passed, and John Cena. And I also knew before opening it, that Aaron's, Justin's, and Basil's contracts were the standard $300 a week. Okay. I knew that John's was $500 a week. The reason I knew that is when, when Bruce told me they were to get ready to make offers or send contracts, I said, Bruce, this guy is going to be a big star. He works his ass off, and he eats more than you could ever possibly imagine. Can we get him $500 a week instead of $300? Mm -hmm. wasn't because I love John. Mm -hmm. It's because I thought it was merited. Yeah. And Bruce said, okay, we'll do that. So John paid me $50 a week in commission on his 500. Mm -hmm. So he netted $450 a week. That was $150 more than he would have gotten had he not had somebody doing the deal for right. him. Absolutely. And in Jim Cornette's mind, his warped, tiny, narrow, little mind, his perspective, if you will, that's me putting my hand in John Cena's pocket. Hmm. Well, uh, there's always two ways to look at things. And uh, I, I, I wish I'd have been in a position to do that. Uh, obviously, I was just uh, the, the, the lowly manager. And uh, the best compliment I ever got from Cena is that for a German, uh, some German news reporters, because a couple of them contacted me, they said, uh, who, who did you learn the most, most for from Ohio Valley Wrestling? They said, I don't know exactly who I learned the most from, but I learned how to be a heel from Kenny Bowen. And that was, oh, that's probably, cool. that was probably the best compliment that I ever got. And nice. I, was, I was preaching above it. it. It was nice to hear because uh, he never told me that. <laughs> so I'm glad he told somebody because I never heard it. But, but, but continue. I can't believe we're still on, but continue. Oh, cool. He told somebody. That's good. He told somebody. All right. So that's uh so the, the two big gripes from Cornette, as I understand it, is one, I exposed the business, and two, I had my hands in the boys' pockets. And uh, mm -hmm. and I understand those – my understanding is those are his biggest gripes. Yeah. Um, now, if you were getting 50%, oh, okay, I could understand that, that you took advantage of these boys and, and got half their money. But goddamn, I mean, one guy posted in here, most managers, most promoters get 20 to 40%. And you didn't see that. 20%. You, yeah. 20%. 20% standard for management. Yeah. A fucking attorney takes 33%. Uh, e even the a contingency deal. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So no, you didn't do anything out of the way. And I can't believe anybody would bitch about it. Maybe other than Jimmy. Yeah. And, and I guess yep. it's because he wasn't getting a piece of anybody's money. So if he's not getting any, you shouldn't get any either. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Let's face it. Jimmy showed up to TV on Wednesdays, bitched about everything that was going on. And if he got mad, he'd take his ball and go home and leave everything to me and Danny and Rip Rogers. So that's how a lot of those shows, not all the time, but if he got mad, he'd just go home. Well, they, they, they rewrote the show, had to rewrite the show because they called somebody up. Well, fuck, that's why we're here. We're here so they can get called up. Insert another piece of the puzzle. That piece of the puzzle went away. He did not comprehend insert another piece to the puzzle. When one piece of the puzzle goes away, put in another. That was my view, right or wrong. That was my view, but he sure shit didn't see it that way. They ruined my TV show. Fuck them, I'm going home. How dare they call them up? How dare they want this guy not on television? Or how dare they want this guy on television? And now I got to take somebody else off. And that's just how he saw it. And it's either his way or the highway. And it's always been that way. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I heard a lot about the way things were run down there. Of course I did because I'd stay in touch with some of the guys. Well, They're going to tell uh, you. Other, others would come back. So I heard a lot of what you're saying. You know, one thing we heard all the time, I, I don't usually like to go into salacious stuff. But since Cornette has made this no holds barred and gloves off, let me ask you a question. So sure. we used to hear all kinds of crazy stories about fun games that Jim and the misses would encourage mm -hmm. the boys to do to keep their spots or get a better spot. All right. You want my you answer? You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. You want my answer? Is that stuff true? 
Well, I'm, I'm going to lead you to this. Rico Constantino, which, which I think is somebody you respect in this business. Rico Constantino, <laughs> yeah. myself and my son did a better than two hour show that got a little over 33,000 views in like 30 days or so, something like that. Explaining uh, who all Jimmy was calling a liar, saying this shit didn't happen. This was Photoshop, this, that, and the other. And we went on being as uh, Jimmy's attorney was threatening to sue me and my son because we were calling his ass out on shit we knew wasn't true. And we said, fuck it, take us to court, sue us. Then we get to subpoena people and have people brought to court to have them testify under oath. And then we'll see who the fucking liar is. And I, I right. dare you to fucking sue us. So yeah, right. your your answer is is that, uh, of course, they, they knew I didn't want to be involved in that shit. That, that was just shit that I didn't want to be a part of. My son didn't want to be a part of that, but there were countless wrestlers, countless females, countless males that would contact me and say, Hey man, do I really got to do this? Uh, I had a friend of mine in Philadelphia that was here for a couple of months, uh, getting her, her tryout. JR, JR loved her. Uh, Jimmy loved her. We all loved her, but for whatever reason, she didn't get a deal. Well, even though Jimmy loved her, we went over to Jimmy's house one night and on the way back home, uh, this young lady told me that she was offered some things that she didn't want to take. And then she basically said to me, Kenny, do I have to fuck her to get a deal? Meaning Stacy, do I have to fuck her to get a deal? Wow. Said, well, wow. I said, honey, I hope the fuck not. I said, you're talented. I said, and normally people that are affiliated and aligned with me don't have to do that. And, wow. but she was shaken. She was shaken by what she was put through because Stacy took her upstairs. And she says to me on the way home, Kenny, do I have to fuck her to get a deal? And I said, I hope to fuck not. And she didn't, and she didn't get a deal. And that's the bottom line. Wow. Kenny Bowen said so. I'm just like, uh, I'm, I'm processing that, man. I'd heard that, but um, I mean, you're you're as inside as anybody I've ever been. I've mm -hmm. never been asked that question of. Yeah. Well, and you know, well, and, and, and James E has the temerity to accuse other people of low morals or mm -hmm. low. Oh yeah, it happens, all, it happens all the time. Happened to me. My happens God. Me. Yeah, because I, I like younger Asian girls. I mean, well, I like them legal. It's one thing I like. Go ahead. One thing, if you saw my challenge video to Jim, you know, because I, I, I'd i heard those stories before and I've heard them from a lot of people, but you're as close to the inside I ever heard that from. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, like I said in the challenge video, you know, we had a lot of women come through UPW, mm -hmm. um, including several that signed. Muffy Maurer, uh, Stephanie McMahon's personal trainer, short-lived. Uh, the Wonder Twins, um, Victoria, Ivory, uh, Molina. Oh, yeah. Uh, Desire. I, I would I would dare anybody to go talk to every any and every woman that mm -hmm. ever came through UPW right. and ask if they were ever, ever put in an uncomfortable situation by management ever. Now, here's one thing that I, that I will clarify. Most of the contract people were not put in that position because there was nothing to hold over their head. They well, already right. had money. They already knew they were going to get the deal, but there were only a few slots left for people that didn't have contracts. Uh -huh. And well, you want to play with the big boys? Well, here's what we would like for you to do. I'm not going to say they were necessarily threatened with their jobs. All I know is Deanna Kane from everything I heard. Oh God, I didn't mean to say her name. Uh, all I know is she was supposed to have a job and she didn't get one. So sorry about mm -hmm. that. I didn't mean to slip up on that. That was a, that was a fuck up. Uh, do me a favor, JJ. Uh, I it's out now, but I'd like for him to bleep that out. Cause I did not, she didn't want her name out and I fucked that up. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but she deserved a deal and she didn't get one. We'll just put it at that. Hmm. And uh, that's a shame, man. This guy, you know, it's yeah. like very rarely these days, Kenny, is anything personal for me. Um, you know, what, one of the reasons I issued this challenge to to Corny is, you know, Han Hannibal and a bunch of others that I'm close with. They're like, Rick, you have a platform now. This would be a good way to get some traffic to your platform. So, hey, everybody out there, by the way, including uh, what do they call Cornette's people? Uh, the, the cult of Cornet. Cult of Cornet. Yeah, so the, cult of Cornetters, what, even if you want to nail me, oh, go to youtube.com forward slash Rick Bassman. Up my subscribership, please. So <laughs> Ken, Kenny, that was one reason. The other is, man, you know yeah. what? I, I like to think of myself as a very like peaceful, 
evolved sort of person, but I, I clearly now see a part of me isn't. Yeah. We, we both, I both really have just want to have that. Like, because, please allow me to continue. Because, Kenny, yeah. I really just want to beat the shit out of the guy. I, I can understand it. There's a handful of people on that list for me. I don't necessarily want to beat the shit out of Jimmy, but if Jimmy ever challenges me, uh, I, we'll we'll take a limo over to his house, or I'll have one sent and they can bring him to mine. Uh, he is not physically going to fucking threaten me or my kid, and uh, and he hasn't yet because he knows we'll show up. The only reason that he gets in these banters with you and Ru Russo's made it clear he don't want to fight. Russo don't want to fight him or anybody else. So, yeah. well, he don't want to fight, so I can say anything I want about him, and there, there's going to be no fight. And when he did want to fight Russo, he didn't want any cameras there. Well, why would you not? If you want to prove to everybody you can beat somebody's ass, Rick, if I ever fight Jimmy or if my son ever fights Jimmy, fuck, I'll pay 15 cameramen to show up. I'll have 30 people with cell phones gathered around because I want them to see how that shit's going to go down. He didn't want no cameras. And he even told me when he was threatening Russo and when he was threatening to kill him and he had somebody who was going to kill him, he said, I'm going to bring a ball bat with me just in case he gets in a lucky punch. I said, what a fucking pussy. You know, you mm -hmm. can you either want to fight the guy or you don't. You want to bring a ball bat to fight a guy that doesn't even want to fight you? That's just just definition of a pussy. Either fight the guy or don't. And, and he told me, he said, now, if Jimmy ever confronts me at one of these shows, he said, eventually, he and I are going to interact. And he says, Kenny, I'll give him the first punch. He said, but I guarantee you, I'm getting in the rest of them. I this said, is, I uh, this is Vince Russo you're Russo. talking about? That's Vince Russo. And he does not want to fight Jimmy. He even begged me. He says, Kenny, you're his best friend. Get us a meeting at the Golden Corral, one of the restaurants you're hooked up at. Let's sit down, have a meeting. Let, let, let's express our differences. No cameras, no nothing. We express our differences. And then when we get up, we shake hands. And if he don't want to see me anymore, that's cool. But I want to plead my case to him and let him plead his to me with no violence, just conversation. And that's what he wanted to do. Jimmy wouldn't do it. He wanted to do shit on the internet and podcasts and everything and raise all the money for charity at the charity of Jimmy's choice. Oh, I don't want yep. to see a son of a bitch make a penny. I'll, I'll, do, that. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Well, and you would eat him alive because I think anybody that's got any sense here saw tonight that you pled your case. And that's why I wanted to give you that forum. And even though I'm notorious at interrupting my guest and getting my shit in, I've been on here for fucking eight hours. I wanted to give you every opportunity to say what you had to say. And I want to have you on again. Maybe we'll do a show for Patreon to give them a little something special. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to have you on again because I know there's a lot more to say and a lot more to talk about. And a lot hey, more. To thank do. you. Thank you. Let, let me ask. Let me ask you one last question. Sure. Is there any chance this guy's going to step up and uh, and go face to face? No, not a chance because really? that gives that gives his fans an opportunity to hear common sense face to face because now they're looking at him. They're looking at that's why he won't do it for Russo. I guarantee you he won't do it for me or Chris, and he won't do it for you because now that gives the fans a chance to evaluate him. And that, that, that's not what he wants. He wants his marks to hear his side and no one else's. And I guarantee you it's eating him. Cause I called him tonight and told him that he just raised $200 for charity. I said, my fans, uh, they donated a hundred dollars if I'd call you. And I got another guy that matched that hundred. So thank you, Jimmy. You donated $200 to my charity tonight. I know you wouldn't do it on your own, but whether you wanted to or not, you donated $200 to my charity. And I thank you very much. I treated him with respect. I was kind. Never called him a name or anything. I thanked him for his charity, charitable donation, even though he didn't want to make one. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Good man. Kenny, uh, Kenny, I, because I'm a host also of Talking Tough, www. I want to be on your show. I'm trying to plug myself and you're still interrupting me, man. No, I want to be on your show. <laughs> I'm afraid I wouldn't get a word in, man. I like to hear you. Like I'd be your guest and I'd do all the talking. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right www.talking-tough.com. It's right there in front of you, folks. You're reading it. Oh, You're thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes, right it there. is. Okay. So, you know, we, we talk to people who have been through horrible times in life. You mm -hmm. know, the, the head of the Hells Angels has been on. The head of the Navy SEALs has been on. Auschwitz Survivor, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys, the boys from our business who have had tough times, Jake, Kurt Engel, Mark mm -hmm. Coleman, Mark Kerr have been on. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about the fun stuff that made them who they are or who people perceive them to be. But more, we talk about the times they went through where they saw their plummet to the bottom and what it took, what they had to do to get themselves out, to become a strong person again. And 
And then we talk about what it takes to be a good person in today's challenging times. That That's talking tough. So I wanted to get that promo out there. I, I also want to get, I, I because I'm a host like you, that's why I started mm -hmm. this. I can tell when we're trying to wrap up and I know you're trying to wrap up. So I would like to, because I, I told you I'm a pro, horrible promo guy and I am really a bad promo guy, but I, I, I want to see if I can pull one out there. Go thank ahead. you, thank you. Well, you'll, you'll agree after you hear this. I'm I'm thinking on the fly <laughs> as, as we go. Right. So, Cult of Cornet, you said, right? Cult of Cornet, that's them. Okay. So, people out there who are part of the Cult of Cornet, if you've listened this long, thank you. Anything you have to say to me, I'll read it. I'll listen. You want to tell me to fuck off or you know eat shit and die? That's that's up to you. Uh, I want to let you know that when Cornette started this whole thing, and make no mistake, he started it. I did not provoke. The first thing I did was send an invitation to him through Jim Ross and Bruce Pritchard, saying, "Hey, this is a misunderstanding. We all work together here for a common purpose. I am inviting Jim Cornette to come to UPW. This is not a promo." This was a legit business invitation right. to do a two-day seminar. You may have heard this, Kenny, to do a two-day seminar at Ultimate University with all my students and to appear on a UPW show. Let's bury the hatchet before it gets any worse. And then, of course, he took that and went, threatened to bring out the seven-foot giant Matt Morgan and beat the shit out of everybody. Um, which Matt, by the way, I thought I was wrapping up. I later handled Matt's deal on American Gladiator. So Jim Cornette. I represented Matt Morgan after you threatened me with him. Um, and I got to tell Matt about the threat that Jim made. And yeah. Matt said, wow. He goes, wasn't Tom Howard at UPW at that time? I said, yeah. And he said, and Sean O'Hare? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sylvester Turkai and, and Matt Weesey, Luther Reigns? I said, yeah. And Matt goes, and I was going to come out there and beat the shit out of everybody? Thanks, Jim. That was, that was Matt Morgan's response to me. Matt, Matt's, right. Matt. Matt. Matt's a dear yeah, friend of mine. Matt's a dear friend of mine. He's a good dude. Good he's guy. a good dude. So cult of course. Also, Let's I also live in Hawaii. Is he still out there with you? Matt Who's Morgan? That? I'm sorry. Matt Morgan used to live in Hawaii. Is he still no, out Matt there? Lives in, Matt lives in Florida now. He's running oh, he's for not, office out there, actually. Oh, cool. Well, my son's running for mayor. We're going to expect you to uh, a campaign donation. That's what we're looking for. Very, very good, man. Very good. All right. So this is, and I wish him the best. I do, as I do Matt Morgan in his, his run for office. I do too. I'll vote for him. Folks, I've done my best, even though I've been on the receiving end of your guy Cornette's attacks year after year after year. I did my best for years to step up, hear what he has to say, be a man and resolve it so we could be friends. He's refused. Beyond refusing, he's insulted me personally. He's insulted my heritage. He's insulted my my stature. He has called me names. He's threatened to, quote unquote, skull fuck me numerous times, which concerns me because I think that implies he could actually get aroused by my skull. But that's a whole nother story. Um, I've tried, guys. I really have. So here's the thing. Three weeks ago, your guy, Jim Cornette, went off of me again, unprovoked for all, all the right. things we talked about tonight. Look, I'm five foot four. I'm 135 pounds. Your guy's got nine inches on me. Mm -hmm. He's got double my body weight. Right. Um, he uh, apparently, even though he's had some heart issues, has nowhere near the medical history that I have. But I'm saying, let's put this behind us once and for all. I am willing on my dime to fly to Louisville. I know we're not, not going to get him on a plane. No, go to no. a location of his no, choice. No. Only we can get in the cage and settle this once and for all. Once and for all. Talk to your guy, Cornette. Make it happen. Thank can, you. Can I be special referee? Can I, can I referee this? Well, I got to tell you, man, there's going to be a lot of referees and a lot of corner men because <laughs> we, at, at, at present, we have offers for those positions from Nova, from Santino Morella, from mm -hmm. Joey Janela, from I Sammy like, Callahan. I like Santino um, Morella. I like Sammy Callahan. Yes, these are all people that want to be involved somehow or other. So it'll be a good time. Bottom line is, guys, I, I want to say I have no animosity toward the guy, but I don't think I'd, I'd be saying that truthfully because I do feel something. Yeah. Um, I'd like to resolve it. I'd like to, I'd say face well, to face. Well, face, face excuse me, Kenny, 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 I'm trying to say something. Excuse go ahead. Me. Go ahead. It, it'd be more, it wouldn't be face to face. It'd be more face to chest. Wait. But everybody, I'm trying once and for all to put this to rest. So 
write to Cornette, however it is you get a hold of him, and tell him, hey, Jim, this little fucking midget Jew who you want to skull fuck is calling you out. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do it? Well, he's got one of his marks in here right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and let you know. I'm sure you can see it. Uh, he he says, Jim called you out and you tucked your tail and ran, Rick. It doesn't sound like you're tucking your tail and running to me. No, no, no that's not. That's who, who, who's, he, he, says you're, he says you're a terrible promo. You told us that at the start. I mean, yes, I don't terrible. know where the insults are coming from. Terrible you promo. Um, I, I don't see the name. I, I do not see it on the screen. Ken, uh, no. he, he's on he's on Periscope and his name is Junior Mint 12. Uh, so in case you're on Twitter, that's probably he's watching on Twitter. I, I, I'm not I'm not getting it. But um, yes, yeah. I'm a bad promo. I know that. Uh, but Junior Mint, I'll tell you this. He has never challenged me to do anything physical. Mm -hmm. So I've never had an opportunity to accept or I'm to sure run. You I'm sure you would have heard about it if it actually happened. I I'm sure I would have, and I probably would have accepted, but it didn't happen. So the tables have been turned now. And in junior men, I absolutely am ready to go. I will buy my own ticket and fly to Jim to make this happen. Let me make a point real quick. Hey, uh, junior man, you're wanting to call him a liar and you want to talk shit in here. And I know you want to go blow Cornette. You're, you're welcome to do so. But the man has told you exactly what happened. You made, you made the challenge. He heard it. So go back to Cornette and, and I would block you, but I can't block Periscope assholes. So that's fine. So go back to Cornette, tell him everything that he said here tonight. And let's see if Jimmy takes him on his challenge. He's offered to fly himself here. So if your hero, your God, your little cult leader, Jimmy Cornette is such a tough guy, you heard the challenge here tonight. It's, it's recorded on three different sites. So send Jimmy a copy of it. Let him take a look at it. And then, and then we'll see who tucks their tails and run. And I guarantee it ain't going to be Rick. So little junior mint, go report to your cult leader and see what he says to you. There you go. You got a guy that'll report it for you. Okay. Very good. Anything else we need to cover, my friend? Because I definitely want to have you back on. And I do want to do your show. And I'll be as positive as I'm capable of being. Uh, awesome. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, who's, who's been through more than me, Rick? I'm, I've been Jimmy's friend for 45 years. Don't I qualify for something? You know, we, we, we do a special edition every week on Talking Tough. And it's called Three Way Dance. So mm -hmm. when I started when I started Talking Tough, you know, the first person I had on was, was Dion Joseph, who is... He looks like Ahmed Johnson. He really does. Oh, wow. oh I remember um, him. But, but uh, Dion is a sergeant with the LAPD, and he's known as the Angel of Skid Row because uh -huh. he runs the old Skid Row beat in downtown L.A. Um, the next guy I had on was a child soldier survivor from the Sudanese Civil War. Now, uh -huh. the reason I did stuff like this is I pledged to myself to stay away from the pro wrestling and mixed martial arts worlds. But of course, I couldn't do that. I'm drawn to it. Those are my first loves. Right. So we created a special edition called Three Way Dance. We do it once a week and we put together like unusual pairings from the wrestling and MMA worlds mm -hmm. to uh, to do a, a three way dance. So it's me and two guests who All would right. be fun to have. Who'd be fun to have on with you? With so, me? Not, not the first person that comes to mind. Think unusual and, and out there a little bit. Somebody I got a beef with. No, 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 no. We don't do that on my show. No, no. no beefs. Okay. I, I do no, beefs. No. no. As a matter of fact, I'm starting a new show called The Bowlands Court. I, I love beefs. I'm happy to have them on. I'll judge, I'll judge them. Uh, God, you got a recommendation? I, I have to think about it. Here, I'll give you a couple examples. I had yeah. uh, recently, I had uh, Luke Gallows and Don Fry. Okay. Um, I have upcoming um, Mark Coleman and Scott Steiner. Okay. So, I usually try to find people that don't even know each other because it creates an interesting yeah, dynamic. Those are good. I've done a few of those. Those are good. Yeah, I love it. It's a lot of fun, and it brings different perspectives to the table. Well, you're, uh, a, booker, you're a booker and a promoter and a trainer. I'll tell you what. I'll show up for anybody you want to put me with. You tell me what you think's good. You know a little bit about me now. I'll, I'll trust yeah. your judgment. I'll show up for anybody you want to put me with. Right on. Beautiful. Thank you. Fair enough. Fair enough, my friend. That's all we can ask. And I hope you come back on soon, man. I'd love to have you back on. We went uh, 50 minutes over tonight, and wow. we we get another one. We get to win another 50, and still not scratch the surface. Whatever with all your stories, uh, you're welcome on my show anytime. You drop me a line, Kenny. I got something I want to talk about. You're on, man. That's all. That's all you got to tell me. 
Beautiful, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the forum tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. I, lo I love you, man. I love I love your story. I love your heart. I love what you've done with the pit bulls. We didn't even talk about your rescue missions and Linda Blair. We're going to do that on another show. Uh, I'm fascinated by you, man. And uh, you got a beautiful home out there in the middle of goddamn nowhere. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to, to come out there and visit you. I promise you, man, me, Chris, and Maya's coming. As, as soon as you're uh, comfortable to have us, we're coming. We'll wear a mask if we got to, but we're coming. I'll, I'll wear a tiger mask if I have to. <laughs> It'll be good to see you, man. Kenny, thanks so much for having me on, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And my fans, thank you. All of them but Junior Mint, but everybody else was cool, and I appreciate that. Hey, even Junior Mint, man. We're all, we're all entitled to our, uh, to our uh, uh -oh. opinion. We got somebody who wants to sign off the show. There, <laughs> and then, you know, it's funny. They, they know when I'm wrapping up a call. Yeah. And now, now singing for their side. They're excited. Yeah, they did that with me and you the other day on the phone. Remember, they knew. Oh, you know, they, 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 they oh, know when it's ending. It's so weird. I yeah. that dog. All right, feed them dogs. We don't want to have what happened in the other day. Let's get them dogs fed. Be good, man. Thank you. Right, good. Thank you so much. Thank you.